no more show at late night. You know what it is. Still recording to you live during quarantine. Tonight, we have the illustrious guest joining us. That's right. The drip got himself, Billy Porter, y'all. What's going on, guys? Uh, <laughs> Billy, how's it going? The empathy that I have for what's going on right now, specifically for our people, um, is really heartbreaking. Um, I'm also dealing with a little bit of PTSD. Yeah. From being, you know, from being a survivor of the AIDS crisis. Yeah. You know, it's eerily, eerily similar, just in tone. How has coming from a place of like being super marginalized, having a lot of detractors, having support, but then having a lot of detractors, a lot of people talking shit about you, saying this and that, how, how did that steal you? for the, the place that you're in now, which is like a really, which is a great place. Cause you know what I mean? Well, I speak your, about- The ascension is like- Yeah, you know, yeah, I speak about age a lot. You know, we live in a very ageist culture. Yeah. Um, and there's the age element where I feel really blessed that it has happened later for me in life. I just turned 50 last year. So with age comes wisdom. So there's that component to it. You know, the component about sort of standing in my truth and my authenticity has mm -hmm. been a lifelong journey. You know, from the moment that I could comprehend thought, my masculinity has been in question. Right. And as we know in our culture, masculinity is the thing. Especially yeah. if you're a, a man, especially if you're a black man. Black. You yeah. know, when I was five years old, my family sent me to a psychologist um, every Wednesday after kindergarten to have a psychologist dissect the reasons why I was a sissy, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that launched me into this space of something was wrong with me and I needed to be fixed. My entire life, that's what it's felt like. Um, and it was always based on my masculinity, me not being masculine enough by society standards. And getting into show business did not quell that at all. It actually made it worse. You know, did because you think now, it did? Yeah, I, I know it did. did you th because, going in, did you think it was going to be like, oh, I'm in Hollywood now, I'm going to be more accepted? Theater. I would say theater first. Theater. I, I, yeah. there, there is an acceptance. Mm -hmm. in it while simultaneously a dismissal. How much of a difference do you think it would have made if there was a version of you for you to look at growing up? I, you know, I speak of this all the time and that was what my intention became. You know, when you see yourself reflected back at you, and this is not just LGBTQ, this is Black, this is Asian, this is Muslim, this is, you know, it's everything. Women. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching something. What was I watching? I, you know, this Disney Plus yeah. station. I'm going to veer off for a second, but this Disney Plus <laughs> station, I've been going back and watching old movies. We were watching Babes mm -hmm. in Toyland the other night. There's literally a song for Annette Funicello, the lead of the movie, where she literally mm -hmm. sings a song about being not being smart enough to do math. Oh, wow. It's yeah, so Disney problematic. Disney is yeah. so in the it's back. Like, yeah. Yeah, if you go back and you watch all those old movies, like like the Song White of the Christmas South and all, and all that, that stuff, yeah. like yeah, you're like your Disney show. You know, so <laughs> I so when I speak of this, I'm not speaking of marginalization for just me. I'm talking mm -hmm. about it's always been that mm -hmm. for a cross section of so many of us. Yeah. You know, that when I decided to take myself out of the masculinity race, my intention became to fill the void of what was absent for me. Right. It was intentional. It was conscious. Yes, I am the black gay one. Yes. That's the position that I saw empty and that's mm -hmm. what I went for and that's now what I represent. That's it was true. on purpose. Mm -hmm. It was intentional. And you're seeing 
the 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 sowed seeds grow. Yeah, and it's growing. Dylan's a lot of kids, man. But so that so was that. Does that make you feel like more so instead of just being Billy Porter and doing what you do? Like, is that in the back of your mind? Like, I have a responsibility absolutely to inspire a younger generation of, of kids that are just like me absolutely. or not like me. Yeah, absolutely. Because there were, that's, I mean, for me, that is what art has the power to do. Right. We as artists have the power and the capacity to reach into the hearts of people and change the molecular structure of what's inside of their heart. We have the power to do that. You know, and so for me, it's always been a responsibility. I don't. If, if, if an artist doesn't feel like that's their responsibility, I'm not trying to read nobody. I'm not trying to call nobody out. But for me in my house, mm-hmm. this is where, this is what it's for, for me. Gotcha. You know, it's important for me. My life was saved. My life was saved by the arts and the people who came before me. It was saved. It is my responsibility to reach back and get the generation that's behind me and save them too. Being a little messy, if yeah. somebody approaches you and they have a project or something that they're working on and they want to work with you because they see some of themselves in you, mm-hmm. but the project itself, ah, it's a little shaky. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you navigate that? You know? No. <laughs> the answer is no. There you go. That's a nice solid answer. That's how you nip it in the, the bud. The answer is no. But listen, I'm always encouraging and I'm always mm-hmm. inspiring. You know, yes. I try to be at least. I try to be encouraging and not crush people's dreams. It's like mm-hmm. continue to work. Here's, you know, I will actually you know, dive into the project with the person, give person, you know, give people notes try to help make it better but if it's not ready it's not ready and it is all that's also my responsibility yes. you know because it's not just for the sake of you know it's like i didn't vote for barack obama simply because he was black he was black right yeah. i voted for him because he it. was the best person for the job yeah and still is, and has been one of the best people for the job in history yeah, That's why I voted for him. Not just because he's black. I voted for Hillary Clinton because she was next. Mm-hmm. She is smart. She's ready. She was the one in that moment to lead us to a different place. Now we have seen what has happened mm-hmm. when we hold our noses and vote for an idiot. Yeah, for well, those we didn't who vote did. for him. For those, those who did. did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for those who also took their toys and went home. True. And sat it out. Yep. That's a vote for him. That's what we get. That's what we yep. get. That's All a right. vote for him. You know, right. people you died that. for us. You the wild, you are the wild style icon. I have to ask, how nice. many pair of glasses do you own? Oh, I don't even, I haven't even counted. <laughs> so like the ones you wear right now, are these just, just for today or just? So here's the deal. Um, First of all, I have a lot of glasses because my husband used to be in luxury eyewear. So I have glasses. I have lots of frames from that. These particular frames, I have two bedazzled frames that um, happened right before the Oscars this year. Mm -hmm. And my prescription changed. And when I say changed, I mean changed for real. Like, I'm 50. I have the progressive now. Like, it really, really changed. So right. I got my pre- prescription filled for these two bedazzled frames, went to the Oscars, then went right to London for like a month. Okay. When I came home, we immediately went into lockdown. Oh, and wow. so I have two frames <laughs> that have my new prescription in them. Oh. And they're both bedazzled and crazy. <laughs> 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 I no, would no, not no, be you, wearing these... Th- Every day. <laughs> that is low-key the flex, though. I, I respect that's a, that's that. That's a very <laughs> strong flex. flex. That's now, a very strong you flex. Said, before we started the interview, you were saying, you know, your trajectory, uh, you know, hopefully isn't that different than ours. You know what I'm saying? We all came from the, you know, came from the bottom, and now yeah. we're out here shining. i got to ask the question. Yeah. What is the one purchase you've made 
that you were just like, yo, I made it. What one I got purchase, that check? Yeah. What one purchase the happiest um, purchase you ever made? I would have to say when Kinky Boots hit. Shout out to Kinky Boots. Shout out to Kinky Shout Boots. Shout out to Kinky Boots. Um, I had a car service. Ooh. Taking me home at night. And so for the first like six months of the show, I was doing this car service and they were giving me a stipend and to pay for it. And, you know, finally, like when the Tonys were over and all the press was done and we were just in the show, Mm -hmm. eight shows a week, I was able to sort of look at my bills and stuff. And I realized that like, I could drive myself to work in a brand new BMW. Mm -hmm. I could drive myself back and forth to work, park, in my building, pay for parking in my building, which I have parking in my building in Harlem, Mm -hmm. and pay for parking down the street from the theater and would still have money left over from the stipend that they had, that they Uh, were giving me for a car service to go home, just to go home, not to pick me up, literally just to go home. So I walked into BMW and I paid cash for a BMW X1. Woo! Talk that talk. That's what I'm talking about. Because I had been bankrupt Right. Previously, so uh-huh. I couldn't do it on credit. Exactly. So I had to go and drop yeah. the money. You had to do it in cash. The cash. Listen, yeah. they, they can't listen. say no to cash. We all no, we no. know the story. Listen, we you know, know the struggle. We know, know the story, man. So I bought my BMW with cash. <laughs> I like that. That is a that is a very inspirational story, right? Put that there. in your bio. I yeah, did. man. Oh man, I'm gonna tell my grandkids that. Like, oh bro, Billy, Billy Porter paid cash for it. I'm telling that's like an Alpo and uh like one of the old Harlem American stories, right there. Story. Yeah, <laughs> um, the BMW cop cash. <laughs> Billy, tell us about this song. Um, so I redid Buffalo Springfield's for what it's worth. What it's worth. Um, you know, for some people don't know what I love is that, like, because my acting career has taken off in the way that it has. There's a lot of yeah. people who don't know that, like, I'm a singer. Yeah, like you know what. When uh when it came out on the timeline on Twitter that you were doing a song, people were like, "Oh wow, I did not know he had vocals." So yeah, yeah, and it's like you know when you're an actor and you're singing on the show, mm-hmm. people hear it and receive it, and they're you know there was surprise and all of that, and you know, um, but like I had four albums. Yeah. I had an R&B album in 1997 on A and M Records. Got a that, catalog. You know, like I, you know, and so I, so with this new platform, my, my, my goal is to take this and take my audience and cross back over into Mm. the mainstream music industry. And my whole goal was, is to pick up where Sylvester left off. For those of you who okay. don't know who Sylvester is, you, you make me feel hot. Yeah. real. So get it. he was gay. He was queer. Mm-hmm. He was black. He was out in the mainstream music industry in the 70s and 80s. He passed away from AIDS. I want to pick up where he left off. So that was always the long-term goal. In the short term, I thought, what will get me, what is the what will get me back into the business? So last year I released Love Yourself, which was a dance single for the 50th um, anniversary of Stonewall. That okay. did well, that went to number one on the dance charts, blah, 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 blah. I've been talking to a bunch of people, signing a new deal. In the meantime, I thought, I need to have a presence during this uh, presidential election. Mm -hmm. You you know, I'm first generation product of the post-civil rights era. And like I said earlier, I came out in 1985. We as queer people went straight to the front lines to fight for our lives. Activism is in my DNA. So I wanted to re-enter the music industry making that statement. Yes, I'm fabulous. Yes, I'm fierce. And I actually am the kind of artist that wants to use my platform and my powers for good. I want to speak truth to power. We used to do that a lot more than we do now. Right. Protest music was a thing. I got to ask this final question right here. You, uh, You have achieved one of the goals we have. You got the primetime Emmy. Yes. yes. We need to know, where do you keep the Emmy? Is it like when you first walk in, is it right there? Do you have it in like a trophy <laughs> case? Do you have it as a table weight? We want to no. know. We, we, haven't, we haven't got the nomination, but it's coming. We want to know how to find a we spot. get there. It's yeah. on my wall. Okay. In my living room. 
with my Tony and my Grammy. Woo! Took that talk. Took that, that, that talk, Billy. Took <laughs> that talk, Billy. We need to ask him. We need to ask him, Billy. Let them know. Let them know. <laughs> Let them know you are accomplished. Like, give this man his roses. It's on the wall. Nice. <laughs> He's a five-tool player. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> also, Billy, we, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask. The outfits. What? Bro. The yeah. outfits, the Met Gala. So, yo, what for real? Go is that a, is that a strictly Billy vision? Is there a team that's helping you put it together? Well, yes, I have a team. I can't do that by myself. You know the explosion. I always knew. I've always been into fashion. You see pictures of me as a kid. I I was always dressed to the nines. Right. I'm a kid that wore, you know, a suit and tie to public school every day. Right. You know, like that's just the way I've always been. Um, I knew that fashion could be a part of. My brand, you know, I see the women doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's a different revenue stream. You know, it's like you can turn that into commerce. Right. And so it was always my goal to do that. I, fi I found a stylist who understood that I wanted how I wanted to play with, you know, the gender uh, nonconformity right. thing. Um, and we were just a great fit and it um, so well. we, we do it together and we make the de decisions together. And I just, you know, my goal is to make sure that it's a, that I'm a walking piece of art. art I'm a art. walking piece of activist art. Every time I do it, you right. know, when somebody like Lady Gaga or Madonna does it, they're considered artists. And I find when, you know, I do it sometimes, I'm just a faggot. Shit. And yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't receive that. Right. This is art. Well, you this gotta just art. know, Billy, let me just tell you something. When you step on a red carpet, you are dunking on everybody else on that red carpet. Just let it be known. Bring in the heat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't nobody fucking up a red carpet on, like yeah. you fucking up a red carpet, Billy. <laughs> you feel bad for everyone that comes behind you because, For listen, real. If done. I had to walk behind you in a stupid-ass Tom Ford I'm suit, I'm going through the like, service damn. exit, all right? I'm going to sneak in. <laughs> Billy, are you, are you sad that the Met Gala was canceled this year? Um, yeah, I'm sad, but, like, you know, it'll happen again. It'll happen again. Did you have, did you have some heat? On store, we had to. Yeah, we did. We we had something. We didn't even. We were using a, a designer. We were going to use a designer out of London. Um, and we had started the process, mm -hmm. but COVID happened so early. It was right. nothing was even. You know, there were just sketches done. Um, gotcha. so we'll just pick it up next year, well, or whenever they read schedule. Hopefully, we catch you next year before the uh net ne ne Next Met Gala, and we see what the heat you're bringing. We're going to do the extended interview and the walkthrough, and you show us all the designs and stuff. Awesome. Listen, right? Also, all right. if you want to be really, like, abstract with it and, like, really out there, you could just bring two huge duffel bags and put either one of us in the duffel bag. Whoa. You whoa. know what I mean? Whoa. Do, whoa. Relax. Well, relax. Listen, That's too much heat. There's a lot to present. Don't Go try ahead. me. Cause I no. might pull you right beside me. Listen, Listen. If it, it might have to happen. Billy, My bodyguard. <laughs> oh, even better, even better, Billy. We know you're a busy man. We're gonna let you go. Thanks for sitting down and talk to us. Every Thanks time for we have a guest me. on this show, we always ask them. You know, in uh, New York, the bodegas they have the neon signs. Neon yep. sign could say what food is available. It could have a phrase. What would you like your neon sign to say? Change for good. Change for good. Because hey, that's what we need. That's, we that's need right change now. for good. That's right a now. fact. Amen, Preach. brother. Yo, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Billy, Billy Porter, Porter in the building. Thank you guys so for much, having Billy. me. Thank you for well, having thank me. Thank you.